Hello, do you remember this quad? This is the Tyro 119 and I reviewed it back in January. Really liked it actually, uh, apart from these motor wires, but it flew pretty well up to a 6S, so you could fly it with a 4S. It had a GPS ready and I put um, this FreeSky R9 uh, receiver on it. And so, you know, it can fly a decent distance and that I don't really have to worry about it. And one thing I did at the time, and I did mention it, was I used F-Port for both my control signal and to get telemetry back. And I said I would come back and do a video about F-Port and I really didn't get around to it and then we had the whole lockdown thing. And so I've only just really had a chance to go and fly it and do some stuff with it that I wanted to show you. Um, and then I've gone back to my footage I had and I didn't have much. So I'm having to fill in bits of gaps around stuff that I did film, which wasn't that much. But before we get into it, we should talk about what F-Port is uh, and how you can use it. It's, it. I'm using an R9 here, but it doesn't have to be an R9. Um, it is a way of getting a control signal and a telemetry signal on a single wire. So instead of having uh, a normal S-Bus connection and having like an extra wire that would go to another UART to perhaps pass telemetry back if you've got a telemetry type receiver, so something like an RXSR, or one of the R9 um, MM OTAs, which I've got here. So instead of just having that extra wire, you could connect the S port slash F port connector up to that single UART and have your control signal and your telemetry sent back and forth on that single wire. It's also supposed to be faster than S bus. I don't really see it. When I went from S bus to CRSF, so using Crossfire, you could really tell the difference. I don't see it so much in this. I would also suggest that Telemetry is not that useful unless you've got something I think you really want. On this, it was the question of, hey, if I've got a GPS, that means I can get my GPS telemetry. And that means I can send my GPS coordinates on the quad back to my radio and see where I am. And if I crashed, I could find it easy and I'll, I'll be showing you how to do that. But let's go for a bit of a, a close up picture and I'll show you how I connected this. Um, and exactly what I did to get it sorted out because it wasn't quite as straightforward as just connecting it I had to do a couple of CLI bits until they worked essentially So we're looking here at the manual page for the FreeSky R9 MM OTA receiver Which I've got on the quad, but you know, it's going to be similar depending what sort of receiver you have Although it's generally only certain R9s that have both what's called the S-Port, F-Port and the inverted S-Port which is interesting itself. So a, a quick explanation for what we did have. We had the voltage in, uh, the ground and the S-Bus out going to the regular S-Bus port. Now it all comes down to different types of inversion and what can handle bi-directional communications which I'm not going to go into in great detail because firstly it's complicated and secondly it's complicated enough for me to not fully understand it in order to explain it. But it basically comes down to there's certain pins on your flight controller that can handle bi-directional communications and certain ones that don't. Generally speaking, when you've got an S-Bus connection on your flight controller, it's an inverted signal and by going inverted, um, it loses the ability to do bi-directional communications. I learned this the hard way because what I did is I took my connection from S-Bus away and then I connected literally just pop the pin over to here and expect it to work. I got a control signal but I didn't get any telemetry signal because that S-Bus couldn't handle bi-directional communications. On most flight controllers this should always come from a TX pin from a sort of non-inverted port rather than the RX pin. And the weird thing with FreeSky is when they've got their S port F port like this that is an inverted signal and their inverted S port is actually an uninverted signal so this um, inverted one should normally go to a normal UART which isn't inverted whereas this S port F port one would go to an inverted one possibly where you'd normally connect your S bus. There isn't a, a kind of an explanation if you look at the Betaflight site it's not particularly up to date but it, it basically says lots about inversion and stuff but essentially you're connecting to a TX pin of your chosen UART but not all flight controllers are going to be the same here so it might take a bit of experimentation. So just to illustrate that point this is the S-Bus connector on my Tyro 119 which is connected to the R9 OTA and it's now on its third pin it was originally connected to the S-Bus connector moved over to the S-Port slash F-Port connector and now it's all the way over to the inverted F port connector although that's not actually inverted 
and this goes to the TX pin of UART4 which is the white wire. Um, there still needs to be some stuff to do in the CLI tab and I'll show you what exactly what I did in Betaflight next. So here's what the actual Betaflight setup looks like and there aren't many changes from a normal SBUS receiver. So in the ports tab you're still going to have a serial RX allocated. F port is still a serial RX type of protocol exactly like SBUS is. If we go to configuration we'll see there's a change there and it's not massive. We have got FreeSky F port as our serial provider. We've also made sure we've got telemetry on here because we obviously want the telemetry output to come out. Um, but that's about the only change there. And that's it. Everything else is uh, absolutely standard except when we get to the CLI. There is a couple of little seal RX stuff that you don't have access to from the main page. I will look at my serial RX. So the one we actually set up was F port. That's pretty obvious. We've also got a couple of other things here. One is serial RX inverted, which you can set to on or off. That is generally if you've got a problem where it looks like the receiver's okay, but the sticks aren't responding. Um, try setting this on or off, depending what it's there already, and see if that makes a difference. And similarly, the half duplex setting the, uh, the default value is off. I found out I wasn't getting any telemetry, so I tried turning it on. That sorted it out. I went through this a couple of times, trying a different few iterations before I got it right. And each time I had to, you know, disconnect and then try and find the telemetry information from the radio every time. But I eventually got it working. But that might take a little bit of trial and error if it doesn't sort it out straight away. Okay, the way to tell if your telemetry stuff is working is if you go in and go to where the actual telemetry is, which is in this one over here. You you will see at the moment we've got a whole bunch of telemetry stuff. So what you would do in all occasions anyway is say delete all sensors. Really delete? Yes. Uh, you see we've got nothing there. And then we say discover new sensors. And what we should get is a good sort of load of them like this. If you If you do this and you just get uh, RSSI and like A1, it means it hasn't worked. Those are sort of the built-in telemetry that's coming. The rest of this stuff, all the accelerometer stuff, the uh, I think RX battery is the one that, that comes along, the V-speed, the temp, all that stuff. This is proper telemetry stuff and this little star is where you can see it uh, actually meaning it's transmitting. You will notice I've just discovered this now and I've got no GPS. The reason I'm not getting GPS here is because I'm inside the house, there's no GPS signal coming down on the quad, and so it's not transmitting an actual telemetry. The, the way to do this is go outside um, where you would get a telemetry signal. Um, again, delete all the sensors you have, rediscover them, and then you'll you'll see it, it, it pop in there and, and it'll all be good. I'll, I'm going to go into telemetry a lot more in another video, I think, rather than try and sort it all out here. But anyway. That's that's the test to do. So every time you make a change, especially if you're using those CLI commands, you can double check obviously your sticks as far as being in beta flight goes and make sure that responds. But for telemetry, delete what you've got, rediscover it and make sure it all appears here. Now, as far as the setup goes, on this particular quad, it's very easy because this is running the R9MM OTA and this runs access. So all I have to do here is go in the options for my receiver and if I go to options, you can see F port is ticked. And this is because that the firmware for F port and S port, and um, this is on flex, all shares the same firmware. So that's super easy. So that's the story in this one. This is the Tyro 119. But what about if I had a different one? This is Tyro 129, which also has an R9. But this is an R9MM, not the R9. MM OTA. So this is on the ACCST firmware. How would I get F port in this? And this is where it gets a bit more complicated and if you bring in RXSR and anything else you may have to do a bit of research here. So I just wanted to further illustrate that point by showing you what the firmware downloads look like. So this is the R9MM OTA that I've got and I've got the access firmware I'm running and you'll, you'll notice there there's no particular versions of it and if we look at what we get if we were to download the latest one once we unzip that we get three files uh, we get the FCC we get the LBT and we get the flex 
and in the readme it actually says that F port and S port can be switched in the radio menu. All good there. If we were to go over to the regular R9MM that I was using before, you can get the access version of the firmware and that will give you much the same uh, idea as the OTA except you don't have the OTA function. But with the ACCTS firmware, and I don't think in terms of R9 that downloading the new version of the software means it becomes incompatible like ACC ST on other stuff so if we uh, if we download the latest one here we will see we get um, again three versions of the software FCC flex and LBT and on each of them we have a specific F port version and the regular version so in these cases you'd have to put the uh, F port version onto your receivers and then we've got as an example the RXSR again you can run the access firmware with this um, but if you've got your regular radio and you've got the ACCST firmware, don't download the version 2.1 because it makes everything else incompatible. You've got the history download here, which I think is a thing they've only just brought back. And again, if we look inside that zip, we've got the FCC LBT and then we've got F ports for FCC and LBT as well. So again, it's all about flashing firmware here. If that sounds like too much hassle, don't forget you can Instead of using F port and using a single wire, you can use the S port telemetry and get your telemetry back that way, which does include the GPS stuff as well. I did make a video about using soft serial for this, but you don't have to use soft serial, you can use an actual proper UART pin for it. Even if you do have to update your receiver firmware, in terms of the modules, both in terms of the R9MM and the internal XJT module, they should both know about F port already and you shouldn't have to touch them. Here I am with the Tyro 119 uh, ready to fly um, with F port set up. And the reason I'm out here is I want to show you one of the things I think is most useful about if you've got uh, F port or telemetry with a GPS, and that's about recovery. So let me turn this thing on, let it get some uh, GPS sats, wait for that light plane to come over wherever it's coming from, and uh, we'll get on with it. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so you should see from the OSD that we've got GPS sats and we've got a lock there. I've put the position on the screen. And on my radio, I'm using uh, the telemetry screen, and you can see I've got my GPS sats there, I've got a bunch of other stuff. I don't find it particularly useful unless you're going to be line of sight flying or you're going to be using a GPS. Uh, and I'll show you why, and it's because of recovery, about what happens if we were to crash it and the battery fell out or something like that, and you know we lost our other means of doing so. So uh, let's go for a quick fly, and then we'll bring it down, and I'll show what I mean. Right, so off we go, off for a little bit of a fly, and I just wanted to use some of this battery up before I dumped it down in the field. But I have to say, I almost had to uh, do stuff for real here, because what happened is the rapid fire module decided it was going to lose sync, and I was like, oh, where am I, where am I, come back, and then you hear that very reassuring beep to say it's got the sync again, and it was okay. It, really weird, this actually, it, uh, it happened again on the next battery, it just did it the once, lost the sink and then got the sink back again and then it was fine for the rest of the flight. Really strange. So whenever I'm out with a GPS equipped quad and my rescue mode is set as a, a fail safe, I always go out and test it just absolutely every every flight just to make sure things are still working fine else I'm very suspicious about it. But yeah that, that was all seeming to go in the right direction so that was fine. What you may have noticed from looking at the slight difference between my OSD screen and the radio screen is the GPS coordinates are represented in a different way. On the OSD you'll see it's a decimalized GPS coordinate and on the radio it's the more traditional um, longitudinal, latitudinal with uh, minutes, seconds, that sort of thing. And it's quite important to know the difference because when you search for them you do it in a slightly different way and it's not obvious how you do a conversion with them. So here I am there and what I'm going to do is just chuck it down in the field uh, a little way out, not too far because it's very tall grass and it's hard to walk in, uh, just somewhere that I can quickly go and unplug the battery from as well. So this will do. <clears throat> now if you're wondering why on earth I just seem to land in the middle of the field there, it's so we can basically uh, try and emulate what would happen if we were out somewhere and uh, we crashed and the battery fell out. In this occasion I've obviously got my beeper you can probably hear it now so I'm going to turn this off and unplug the battery as if we had that sort of crash basically. 
Here's the quad. Let's unplug it. Okay, so that's now unplugged, the beeper's off. We'll leave that there, we'll go on back. And then we'll have a look at what's actually on the screen because this is the cool thing about having the GPS telemetry information. Should you lose the battery, it will just give you the last piece of information it has, which should be its current GPS position. Ah, we're over here. <laughs> so here we go. And you see it says we're getting no data, but it's still got that information on the screen there. So what can you do with that? This is where your phone comes in. All you need to do is go onto Maps or Apple Maps, Google Maps, something like that, and basically tap in that coordinates. Let's do this now. So you can see what I've done is just tap in the coordinates it's given me. And if you're doing this from an, um, an OSD, then it's in decimal. Uh, but do the same thing, uh, just leave a space in between. And once we wait for the uh, 4G to kick in, uh, don't, don't bother about directions because they're trying to take you to a road you'll see we've got um, a nice little marker. So if I try and walk towards where that marker tells me, let's see what happens. This, of course, is never an exact thing. It all depends on your uh, GPS sort of coverage and stuff. Hopefully you'd have other things on your quad as well, like uh, a beeper that beeped. But of course, if you're a kilometer away, you'd probably need to get a lot closer before you can actually get to hear anything. You can see on the map here, hopefully, it's mostly reflecting that um, we're doing something. It's gonna, it's gonna vary, it kind of depends how you are. Uh, I mean, here's the quad, I'm walking in that direction. With maximum zoom, you'll see we're just about on top of it. This, this is never gonna quite get you to the exact spot, but it should get you within sort of a 10, a 10 meter radius. So at least if you've got other stuff on the quad as well, that can help you find it. So that was all full of reflection. So I just wanted to show this properly. Uh, and, and that is how to get that set on your map. So this is on Google Maps on my iPhone, but it should be the same obviously on an Android phone. You take that coordinates you've got there and you literally tap it in. So 50 space, 53 space, 40.63 N and then a space and then the, the Western coordinate and it points straight to it. Similarly, you'll, you'll notice when we went down on, on the quad, if we held that last frame, and this is even for people without a GPS, if, if you look at your DVR and have a look at what your GPS coordinates are there, these are the decimal coordinates, you can go into Google Maps or Apple Maps, tap in that same number in the same way, which is you just tap in the, the full decimal stuff, uh, leave a space between them, and you will go to that exact area. So there you go, that's my F port set up on my R9 OTA. But as I said, it doesn't have to be an R9 receiver. There's lots of telemetry receivers in the FreeSky range that uh, can do F port and, and thus get this sort of telemetry. And as I said, I, I like it uh, as far as an extra sort of bit of ammunition in your arsenal about being able to find your quad again, but I'd never use it in isolation. So it's great you've got the GPS coordinates, you can get yourself to that sort of area, but it's not an exact science and you saw in that last bit where I showed you the decimal versus the uh, regular sort of coordinates, they were slightly different. And that's basically the time it from me getting that coordinate from the DVR, walking back and having a look at the radio means that because it, it's always sort of getting a, a signal and sort of deciding how accurate it is, it's always changing slightly. So we got a slightly different signal. We're only about sort of six foot difference, but um, that, that GPS coordinates gets you to a, a close area, but not exact. And that's why something like a battery back beeper and stuff like that is, is really good. I also didn't go into detail about how I set up the telemetry screen and the bits I had there. I figured that was a, a video about telemetry in general and what you could do with it. Um, as I said, I, I don't feel it's particularly relevant being on the screen there because I've got the goggles on most of the time. It's only if there's a crash and I need to look at it. But we can set up alarms from that and so that's something I'll be going through in a bit more detail in another video. But in the meantime, I hope that's been helpful and I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.